Welcome back, fellow gamers. We have for you today another anti-deck tech. This time we're tackling Edgar Markov and his band of vampires. So if this is your first time viewing one of my anti-deck tech videos, the important things to note are that this is really for tabletop magic. Uh, anybody that might have a friend that's playing Edgar Markov and he consistently wins or she's just dominating the battlefield and you want to get a bit of leverage on it. These are some of the cards that you can play to kind of even out and it's going to be very narrow. You're going to be looking at cards that are probably going to apply only to Edgar Markov. So it's important to note not to just fill the deck up with all the suggestions. Maybe even none of the suggestions here really work depending on the rest of your playgroup, but it gets the wheels turning. You might find some cards you didn't know about and develop other strategies to make a deck that's more competitive all around. With that said, let's take a look at Markov. He has Eminence, which is whenever you cast another vampire spell, if Edgar Markov is in the command zone or on the battlefield, create a 1-1 black vampire creature token. He has first strike, he has haste, and whenever he attacks, you put a plus one, plus one counter on each vampire you control. So obviously vampire tribal. Looking at the cards that really get played in these decks, vampires are predominantly black. Uh, with Ixalan, that might change where you might see a bit more white. But the vampires that do have red are mostly black red. So some of the cards we will be highlighting here kind of affect, I'd say 95 to 99% of the threats that you'll be seeing. So with that said, let's jump in. The first card I'm going to highlight is Ether Snap. Ether Snap is remove all counters from all permanents and exile all tokens. So this works in getting rid of all those one ones that Edgar is pumping out. And if he happens to hit the battlefield, attacks, and he's putting plus one plus one counters on the other vampires, that will remove those counters. So it's a great strategy to use. Not only that, if you're up against another player who might be playing like a Spiralings deck or a Soldier deck or, or whatever that requires a lot of tokens or even a Planeswalker deck this will hit those so this is one of those cards that's actually really good in a lot of different situations and happens to also apply against markov and next we have ratchet bomb ratchet bomb is really good in the sense that if the player is playing a lot of tokens because there is not only edgar markov that produces those vampire tokens but there's also bloodline keeper and bloodline keeper is kind of a heavy hitter right just tapping this for zero will get rid of all those tokens that are in play so again not just great against vampires, but token strategies in general. So this is one way of really looking at it. We are really focusing on token hate for this first part of the video, because I feel that even though a lot of the decks will only carry about 25 to 35 vampires, uh, those vampires will then, in most cases, and especially under Edgar Markov's ability, create additional ones. So you're looking at you know doubling that vampire total if the game runs late. Being able to get rid of those tokens are key, and so is with this next Pernicious Deed. So you pay zero, sacrifice Pernicious Deed, and destroy each artifact, creature, and enchantment with converter mana costs X or less. And a good amount of vampires are around the three or four converted mana cost range, so you could actually pay the three, four mana and get rid of a bunch of those vampires that happen to be on the battlefield. But that might not play favorably too well if you have a lot of smaller creatures as well. Cleanse is a board wipe that only affects black creatures. Now, even though Edgar Markov is a three color commander, most of his creatures have black in it. It's a bit pricey. It's on the reserve list. That's something to factor in. You might want to go a cheaper route. Or instead of clearing the board, maybe you want to just use all those vampires for your means. What you can do is play Insurrection, which is a great card to turn your fortunes around you could do a lot of things not necessarily just attack but use a lot of the vampire abilities give yourself a real advantage and for eight mana this is definitely a card that can win you the game outright if there is lethal on the battlefield and just people haven't had a way of breaking through this is a great way of just dealing with that vampire deck hidden on black could be a whole deck and if you are looking for a commander major tarot is one of the best ways of going about just sacrificing your general if this was your general even though his name is major uh, and removing all black creatures from the game so exile in all those black creatures recasting him if he is your general and just keep playing it rinse and repeat conversely if you just have a way of recursion he's not your commander he's not your general slot him into the 99 whenever you need him bring him back onto the battlefield sacrifice him get rid of all those black creatures. Echoing Truth 
and Hallowed Moonlight are two great ways of getting rid of a lot of tokens. Either they're already on the battlefield or if they'd be coming out on the battlefield, these two cards are able to deal with those token-based strategies. I really think that tokens that Edgar Markov produces are a real threat because you have a lot of different vampire lords that are running around in this deck. So a 1-1 vampire that might not really have much to his name suddenly becomes big as soon as you apply a few buffs or you're just increasing the vampire count so that captivating vampire or some other creatures really take advantage of all the tokens out there so getting rid of tokens i think is a primary focus you should be looking at it and then let's say you want to get really an and you really want to target a vampire a skeleton or a zombie well then you should play undead slayer it's a card that can really just deal with whatever threat hits the board this is a very narrow card so if you know your friend's absolutely going to play a vampire deck sure go ahead and include it i have never included this card i have i've owned this since m10 never played it in a deck but i've never really had to deal with an oppressive vampire deck in my meta so that's why i've never played it i have had it played against me it's been a pain in the butt so maybe it'll be a pain in the butt for your friend or opponent and keeping on the hating vampire train let's look at blazing torch blazing torch is a good ability uh, especially against Edgar Markov, simply for the fact of you're equipping a creature that can't be blocked by vampires or zombies. The other ability isn't really anything that I'm going to talk about right now because I'm looking at comboing this equipment with Light Wielder Paladin. So it has first strike and whenever Light Wielder Paladin deals combat damage to a player, you may exile target black or red permanent that player controls. So you're getting rid of those threats that really matter and you're breezing through the attack because Edgar Markov's band of vampires can't block that creature due to Blazing Torch. So it's a really good combo. One that I actually think is a viable strategy. A lot of vampires are three to four converted mana costs. So playing a card like Lavinia of the 10th will allow you to neutralize those vampires and the vampire tokens since you are detaining each non-land permanent your opponent controls with a converted mana cost four or less. This card can shut down decks. It would shut down Edgar Markov because there are very few vampires with a high converted mana cost. And if you just hate black and you don't want them attacking you at all, you could always look at Light of Day. Black creatures can't attack or block. You're neutralizing all of those black creatures. Again, this is a, a deck that has an abundant amount of black creatures comparative to red or white. For the time being, unless Ixalan and Rivals of Ixalan really pump out a lot of white vampires that are playable in a vampire tribal deck. Now, I'm already pretty late into the video, and you might be wondering where the heck Elite Inquisitor and Midnight Duelists are. Why haven't I talked about them yet? And the main reason is that I don't really want to put them into my decks. Uh, maybe Elite Inquisitor, perhaps, maybe. Definitely not Midnight Duelist. It's just not a good card. It's one, two for one. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Protection from vampires. But against other decks that might be onto the battlefield, you're going to look at a situation and be like, oh, I can't really do anything with this. And it's only one card. Having a card instead like Riders of Gavany, and you can give all of your humans protection from vampires. And I would definitely add a Chroma's Memorial to the list of cards that you should be playing if you are in a black or red heavy meta. So like that, you give your creatures Flying for Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Haste, and the most important part, protection from black and from red. Remember how I said most of those vampires were black or red, uh, or black and red? Well, there's your defense against those vampires. You can safely block into those creatures. You can prevent your, your creatures from being targeted by anything that's black or red. Now, yeah, they're still open to cards like Path to Exile and other white removal cards, but for by and large, you're really neutralizing not only the creatures that are in your opponent's deck, but the cards that would remove your creatures from the battlefield. And speaking of removing creatures from the battlefield, Black does like to sacrifice stuff and likes to, as a result, cause its opponents to sacrifice things or destroy things. Playing Sigarda, Host of Herons, Angel of Jubilation, and Tajuru Preserver allow you to really safeguard your creatures and your permanents, ensuring that your opponents can't cause you to sacrifice permanents, creatures, whatever. It's a great way of preventing those aspects. Make sure to slot one or two of these cards in. They're really good. The last card I'm going to mention is Reclamation, and this is a pretty interesting card. The reason I'm not too keen on it is that land destruction aspect. 
I'm not a big fan of land destruction, but if your meta is completely fine with it, you can really look at playing this. It really forces your opponents that have black creatures to evaluate whether or not they want to attack you because every time they attack you with a creature, their controller needs to sacrifice a land. So that's one of the great ways of deterring people from attacking, giving yourself time to set up, find your pieces in order for you to win the game. Now that's the cards I've highlighted. There are definitely a lot of other cards that could apply for hate creatures, but these were the ones that I wanted to highlight. I think they provide you with an opportunity to stand against Edgar Markov and his minion of vampires. In my mind and in my experience, Edgar Markov players like to produce a fair bit amount of vampires use the tokens to their advantage to activate abilities to sacrifice or to just beat you over the head with a throng of boosted vampires from all of the lords if there were any cards you feel that i left off please let me know in the comments below i would love to share it with the rest of the community if you would like to check out some of my other videos you can do that on screen right now and if you'd like to subscribe it'd be greatly appreciated you could do that as well thank you for making me a part of your day and until next time good gaming